Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. I hope you're having a great day. I'm having a fabulous day. I actually just received my iPolo V1 mini miner that was sent to me from Jingle Mining. I'm gonna be reviewing this miner objectively. I already couldn't wait. It's actually, I went ahead and did the unboxing. I will let you know right now that I was extremely impressed with the packaging and even how it was shipped to me from Jingle Mining. Look at this package, this gold. It looks like it's designer almost. And it's kind of really matching up with this gold miner. What's great about this iPolo V1 mini miner is it's very powerful. It can mine Ethereum and Ethereum Classic at about 300 mega hash using only about 240 watts. And what's also great is it comes with a little antenna because it's Wi-Fi. So what a great little miner this is. Just picture, this is, can replace five graphic cards, five 3070s, maybe a 530 60Ti's. And it's small and portable, and I think it'd be great addition to even put it in your home or office. I'm gonna be setting this up, and I'm gonna do some mining of Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, as well as looking into some profitability and revenue projections going forward. So if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to press down on that subscribe button. It really means a lot to me. I put a lot of hard work and effort into my videos and I really appreciate it if you subscribe, but I can't wait. And let me get this miner up and started and let's see what it can do. With this little iPolo miner, it's very easy to assemble. All I have to do is put the Wi-Fi antenna here and plug in the two of the six pins. And this comes to the power adapter that came with the unit. And it comes with the proper power cord too, if you buy it from Jingle Mining. But once I put this all together, if I just configure the miner, set what is my mining pool? What is my wallet address and coin I wanna mine? I am all set to start mining with this. So I already went and I already configured this miner to be mining on two miners pool and it's all set up to go so with that said let's plug this miner in and let's see how it runs i have a power meter here and you'll hear it's the fan startup and normally it's more bold on the fans when it does its initial startup until it starts mining the fan should calibrate and tune down a little bit because i actually set the fan speed a little bit lower but i'll actually be doing a test i have uh, be able to test how loud it is once this miner starts running I can see it's still calibrating right now. It's only at about 28 watts. And once this gets up and going, we'll see how much power it's using at the wall as how loud is this. I am all set up and I think this miner is starting to mine. And actually, let me take the plastic off before I forget. Wow, this is very impressive. Very shiny. It's actually an extremely attractive unit. I can tell from my wattage that I am mining right now. But more importantly too is, is I can go right to my phone and that's what's great about this miner. I can go to the iPolo dashboard and access from my phone. So I am mining at about 298 mega hash. It's still up and calibrating. I think overall it's pretty quiet the way the fans are tuned. Let me put a sound meter on it. So at about one foot away, I guess it's about 60 decibels, which is not too bad. And one thing that I like about this miner is, is the frequency of the fan noise. It's not loud and whistling like servo power supplies. They would normally whistle like and it'd become very annoying in your home. This actually sounds almost like a home, like an air purifier or an air filter. So I'm not bothered by the noise level at all on it. And I'm actually running it in an air conditioned home right now. And it's probably about 78 degrees. So I'm cool. I imagine if it's a hotter climate or you have it in a hotter environment, these fans are gonna have to run a lot hotter. Now let me jump over to my desktop and let's see some of the specs and how this is performing mining Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. If you're interested in learning more about these miners from Jingo Mining, go visit their website at jingomining.com. And on their website, you'll see there's a catalog. They currently carry the Jazz Miner X4 series, Annex Miner, and the iPolo Wi-Fi series, like the iPolo V1 Mini that I'm gonna be reviewing shortly. Additionally, it seems that Jingle Mining places a very strong emphasis on their after-sale support. So there's a lot of great support resources here for the different miners too. In addition to having the specs for the miners clearly printed in the catalog, they have a lot of useful information here for after-sale support. Everything from like user manuals, full video tutorials, repair tutorials, etc. So definitely go check out the jinglemining.com website if you're interested in any of these miners. Jingle Mining runs their own YouTube channel. They do a lot of coverage of the different miners they carry. 
Oftentimes they'll do Q&A sessions, teardowns, and even more recently I see they have a post now of an upcoming live preview, a first time huge discount live stream coming up. If you're interested in one of these miners, want to learn more, and maybe even capitalize on this discount that they have coming up, definitely check it out. I'll put a link below. A common question many people may have about this mini ASIC miner is, how do you control it? There's no mouse, there's no keyboard, do you remote onto it? And that's what's beautiful about this mini ASIC miner. It's a self-contained miner. It doesn't need any extra peripherals to run. Once you configure it and set it up, tell it the mining pool, your wallet address, and you give it some power and internet, it just mines. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And that's the beauty about these mini ASIC miners is their simplicity. When you wanna see what the miner's really doing and if you wanna configure it, what's great is the iPolo team has developed a web dashboard. So from any web browser, you should be able to just come in, put the IP address of the miner, and once you're logged in, you can just see this is the hash rate of the miner, the invalid or stale shares, as well as some metrics as far as the fan and cooling or temperatures of this miner. Other than that, there's really not much to do. You don't have to worry about fumbling with any overclock settings or power limits. You would just come in and say, well, I'm gonna be mining on a certain pool, like I'm currently mining Ethereum on the two miners pool, and you just put in the stratum information right there. You also have your worker information, which is really your wallet, as well as you can name your rig on it too, and then a password. And once you set that up and you have your internet connection, you should be all ready to mine. Just make sure there's some power plugged in, ethernet is all set up, and you're all ready to go. There's a few additional options here that you may wanna look at in case you want to set it up some Wi-Fi, in case you needed some to access some log information or debug information to send to the Jingle Mining team or even the iPolo team to help you resolve any issue. And then you just have some system commands for changing the password or even updating the firmware. Let's take a quick look at the specs for this miner. It's the iPolo V1 Mini, 300 mega hash, 240 watts, but it has 5.8 gigabytes of free memory available. And that's extremely important because 5.8 would allow me to put a large DAG in there or a directed acrylic graph. And it lets my miner mine that algorithm even longer. I know some of the other ASICs that some of the other companies have, they've only had five gigabytes and they've recently had to stop mining Ethereum and had switched to maybe mining Ethereum Classic if they could. And that's what's a wonderful feature I think about this miner. It has that additional headroom. It has that additional memory. So if I can mine Ethereum even a little bit longer, it'll be able to take advantage of it. I'll be able to mine Ethereum potentially up till about March of 2024. And Ethereum Classic up till December of 20 of 31 is their estimate. Now, but we do know too that Ethereum is supposed to turn proof of stake very soon. If I'm looking at the one merge countdown, it's saying it's about 39 days, 13 hours from the time I'm recording on August 3rd until the difficulty bomb starts kicking back in. And then it may be a week after that that they actually do implement the proof of stake. But only time will tell, and we're going to have to see what happens with the Gorley countdown first. But I at least like having the ability to mine Ethereum if I can right now for those higher profits. But fine, when it switches to proof of stake, I'm just going to be flipping over to Ethereum Classic, which has been very profitable lately. But let's take a look at our miner. I've already had this miner up and running and doing some Ethereum mining for a while. Let's go take a look. Looking at the iPolo web dashboard, I can see this miner is currently doing 305 mega hash, showing me on zero rejects, which is great. But what I'm really interested in is what does the mining pool show me? Because that's going to determine how much money I'm going to be paid, how much mining revenue and profit I'm going to be making out of it. So jumping over to two miners, which is where I'm doing my mining, I just put in my wallet address there and I can see, wow, this is really overperforming. It's actually doing 339 mega hash right now at this moment. And it'll fluctuate over time based on the number of accepted shares it's able to submit. And there's usually some variability, but right now it's doing great. My average hash rate is 290.07. And I believe that's because earlier in the day, I actually had a trouble with my cable provider. So my internet momentarily went down and it blipped. And I think that's why I kind of lost some of the shares there. But it came back, and that's what was great, too. I was able to see this iPolo V1 Mini Miner just kind of resurrect itself and come back to life and start mining once it had that Wi-Fi again. So I think over time, this average hash rate is going to be back to 300 or above very shortly. Oh, wow, look at this. It's saying I'm going to be making $8.20 
a day based on the current mining projections it's showing. But again, that's probably because it's showing a higher hash rate at the moment for the number of shares. Looking at the iPolo dashboard for the V1 mini miner, the gold miner, it is doing great. I am showing 310 mega hash and zero rejects, and it's been up for quite a while right now. And I am currently using it to mine Ethereum Classic ETC on two miners. But these numbers look great here, but what really matters is the numbers that we're seeing at the pool. So jumping over to two miners, you see I'm mining on the Ethereum Classic pool. And let me scroll down a little bit so we can focus on what's relevant to us. And right here we see the average hash rate it's recognizing is 303 mega hash. The current hash rate is 324. So wow, -hoo -hoo, it's actually overachieving at the moment. This is really fantastic for me because it gives me an idea of how this miner is performing. This really determines how much I'm going to be paid for pool mining. Regardless, the miner can say whatever it wants. It only matters what the pool recognizes that I'm going to be compensated for. After testing this miner out for Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, I conclude that my miner is able to mine approximately 300 mega hash at approximately 240 watts. So these specs seem pretty accurate. I want to move on and take a look at mining revenue and profits. So if I jump over to what to mine and let me put in some numbers here. So 300 is my hash rate and 240 watts for Ethereum. Also 300 is my hash rate for Ethereum Classic at 240 watts. And then I am currently set up using 12 cents a kilowatt hour. Let's calculate that and get some numbers. So Ethereum is going to be profitable at about $6.68 a day on this miner, given the current market conditions. And I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. Ethereum Classic is going to be profiting $5.50 a day. So these both look fantastic. There's not a big gap between the Ethereum and the Ethereum Classic. And I also noticed too, I'm paying a very small percentage of the mining revenue is going towards the electricity. These miners are much more efficient now I know a lot of people are in areas where the electric costs are much higher than I am. I'm at about 12 cents kilowatt hour, but I know some people it could be at 25 cents. Some people even 30 cents. So let's just pick a high number for right now. Let's just pick 0 0.30, 30 cents a kilowatt hour. I know it sounds insane, right? So let's calculate this. If I'm still able to mine Ethereum, I would be still profitable by profiting $5.65 a day for Ethereum and four dollars and fifty four cents a day for ethereum classic to me that is so much of a big improvement compared to doing gpu mining these numbers may look fantastic right now in what to mine but please keep in mind that this is at the moment given the current state of the market and that could change like that especially we know ethereum is supposed to turn proof of stake very very soon and we don't know the outcome of that some people speculate that when Ethereum turns proof of stake, there's not going to be enough coins to mine. There's going to be so much hash rate coming off of Ethereum that, you know, the other coins are not going to be able to absorb it or they may not be able to absorb it for a while. A lot of people speculate, too, that a lot of the ASICs that are mining Ethereum are going to be just switching and redirecting over to Ethereum Classic. And when that happens, I do not think I can compete on mining Ethereum Classic with my GPUs, especially after seeing the efficiency like this ASIC I'm showing you today. And that's one of the things that makes me say, hmm, I'm probably going to take my GPUs and maybe look for some ASIC resistant projects. Maybe we put them on Flux, maybe Ergo, I'll find something for them. But I think if I want to be competitive on mining still coins like Ethereum Classic, I'm going to need an ASIC like this. And that's what makes this attractive for me. And these are just my thoughts on this. This is not financial advice. I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you have an ASIC? What do you think about these efficiency numbers? Seeing being able to mine something like 300 mega hash at only 240 watts. Do you think that'll still be profitable even after Ethereum goes proof of stake? I'd love to know your thoughts, so please drop a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. I know this has been a long video, but I thought it was really important to kind of give you a very clear picture of what this miner is capable of. And I'm going to be doing more follow-up videos on some Ethereum and Ethereum Classic mining. So once again, thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me that big thumbs up. It really means a lot to me. And I hope to see you on the next video. So until then, next time, stay safe. Happy mining.